Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith, I'm an EEG technologist, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to remove eye blink artifacts without affecting the rest of the EEG signal, just remove the eye blinks. So in order to do this, we're gonna be using a technique called blind source separation and an algorithm called independent component analysis. That's the best way to remove eye blink artifacts. Now, independent component analysis sounds really complicated, but let me break it down in a simple manner for you. So for example, in a rock band, you have many different independent components to the rock band creating a song. So you have your electric guitar, you got your bass guitar, you got your drums, and you also got your vocals. So those are four different independent components. Now, all those independent components together make the rock song. So what independent component analysis does is break it up into those four parts. So it would break it down into the vocals, it would break it down into the electric guitar, the bass guitar, and the drums. It would separate all those into their separate independent components. So for example, if you had a rock song playing with all that stuff in the background and you just wanted to hear the vocals, you would be able to do that with independent component analysis on audio data. So for example, on EEG data, you have many different independent components as well, all summed into this one signal that we see on the EEG. For example, we have our brain data, we have our eye blink artifacts, we got our muscle artifacts, we got EKG artifacts, we got electrode pop artifacts, we got uh, 60 hertz artifacts. So we have all those different independent components that are all summed together that create our EEG signal. Now what independent component analysis does is it separates all of these out. Now let's do that today in MATLAB and also EEG lab, which works on top of MATLAB. So if we go into my computer right now, we just type in EEG lab. I already have it installed, so it makes it super easy. Um, so we're going to load an existing data set. This is just a sample data set that comes with EEG lab and let's load up the data sets and we can plot the data. Here's our EEG data. We have all of our channels and that's just what our data looks like. So what we're gonna wanna do is go to the tools which comes with EEG lab and we're gonna wanna decompose data by independent component analysis. So um, just the basic one, you don't have to change anything, just run ICA that uses the InfoMax algorithm and we're also gonna be using the extended InfoMax algorithm which is good for um, 60 hertz, picking up 60 hertz activity. So we're gonna just press OK and it's going to run our independent component analysis. Now you see all these steps, Let, give it a second to work and then we're gonna look at our independent components and figure out which one is the eye blink. And then once we figure out which one is the eye blink, we're gonna subtract it from the data and we're gonna see our final data. So it's done. Let's plot our components right here. So let me change the sensitivity so it's easier to see um, because we're looking for that big eye blink deflection. So just scrolling through it here, um, we have all these different 32 independent components. Now this one, number five, stands out to me with this big deflection. Kind of looks like an eye blink, but let's scroll through and let's, let's see what else we can find. Um, oh, here again at number five, we got that big deflection. Remember, I changed the sensitivity, so that is definitely standing out from the rest. Oh, this is probably the most obvious one that tells me that this is definitely an eye blink, but we can't just go by looking at this. We should also look at other sources to make sure that we're 100% that independent component number five is our eye blink and that's what should be subtracted out of the data. So let's get rid of this and let's plot, let's use some other tools. Let's, com let's plot the component maps in two dimensions and let's just do the first 10 since that, those look like the most interesting to me. Um, if we look at them, and let's see, yep, number five, the exact one that I said, it has all this activity right where the eyes are. So that gives us even more uh, confidence that that's where the eye blink artifact is coming from. Um, let's look at it again. Let's use another tool that EEG Lab has. Um, they actually, this is kind of cheating, but if you go in here to tools and label components, they will give you a percentage of what they think each one of these independent components is. 
So let's do the first 10 most important ones that look like to me. Um, yeah, so number five is 86% eye blink. Just like how I said, this has to be the eye blink. Um, so if we click on it, we get more details. So if we look at this, a typical eye blink um, on the activity power spectrum, this shows you like the Hertz. So it'll usually just be a straight a line just like this. It's called like one over F, but it'll just be going down like this. And the reason for the spike here at the 60 Hertz mark is that there's actually this independent component isn't completely just eye blink it also has a little bit of that 60 hertz interference with it as well so it guess that's 86 percent eye blink uh, line noise is the 60 hertz so that's why it's picking up a little bit of 60 hertz and so yeah that's what i would guess this is this is eye blink and scrolling through here eye blink scrolling through here um eye blink yeah that's what we're gonna go with. Independent component five is our eye blink, so that's what we're gonna subtract out of our data set. And to do that, you go to tools, uh, remove components from data, and we're gonna remove number five because we've decided, looked at it in many different ways that this is the eye blink. So we subtract it, and yes, let's see what our data looks like. Let's hide this for a second. And first, let me change the sensitivity so it's easier to see these eye blinks. All right. So the it doesn't have the uh, the uh, channel names, but I remember the first two were either I think the first one is the eye channel, and number two was FPZ. So both of those channels will be picking up eye data pretty strongly. So let's just look at the the top ones for now. So as you can see, so the red data is the corrected data subtracted with the subtracted independent component number five that we decided was the eye blink. So with the eye blink subtracted, it just shows the brain data. And this blue was what it was before, that was the eye blink. Now if we scroll through, let's, let's try to find a better example of where the eye blink was subtracted. Yep, there's the eye electrode, eye blink subtracted, you just got the brain data. And um, right here, here's probably the best example um, this really looks like the eye blink deflection. If you guys have seen it on EEG, the blue would be the eye blink and the red is the corrected. The blue is the eye blink and the red is the corrected data. So we did it guys. Through independent component analysis, we were able to subtract eye blinks from our EEG data. Now, why is this, why is this important? Well, sometimes it's actually good to have eye blinks on your data if you're testing the reactivity of the EEG. For example, when a patient closes their eyes, you can see the eye blink deflection and the posterior dominant rhythm, the nice, it's usually around 10 hertz background in the occipital leads and the back of the head, it becomes more prominent. And when they open their eyes, it attenuates and it's less prominent. So sometimes it's good to see exactly when the eyes are blinking, but for example, when you're doing seizure and spike detection or trending software, you wanna look at the trends of the brain data and not these artifacts like eye blinks, uh, electrode pops, muscle data. So I have some future stuff that I'm gonna be showing you guys on how to subtract muscle data from the EEG. You can do it with this independent component analysis, but there's a better method called canonical correlation analysis. It's been shown in studies where they subtract the muscle data with the canonical correlation analysis and the seizure data is still there. So that's what makes that such a powerful technique. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my first time subtracting eye blink artifact from EEG data using a MATLAB EEG lab. I hope I was able to show you guys how it actually works behind the scenes. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button if you wanna support me in my research. Uh, my company, Ion EEG, we're going to be doing artifact removal, spike seizure detection, our activations assistant. It's going to be a great journey, guys. This is just the beginning steps. You're seeing it here documented. It's, it's kind of cool seeing it from step one to the future. And documenting the journey, this is the most fun part, the beginning of the journey, guys. So I hope that this is enjoyable for you guys to watch. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button again. Comment down below if you have any questions. I could help you, I could help you do this if you want. I figured it out. So I'll see you guys on the next video.